Hey everyone, welcome back to Hacker. In this video, we we'll dive into something that sounds complex, but is actually quite straightforward when you think of it like in real life, the time and space complexities. Before we get started, I want to remind you about our exclusive blind sign for post. This carefully curated collection covers essential coding interview problems to help you master the most common patterns and excel in your interviews. Whether you're prepping for fang level interviews or just sharpening your problem solving skills, these problems will ensure you're ready for anything. Even if the exact questions aren't asked, they cover all the important patterns. So be sure to check out our playlist and stay ahead of the competition. Okay, let's start with time complexity. In computer science, this is basically an abstraction. It's how we estimate the time an algorithm takes to run, depending on the size of the input. In real world, when you're doing something, let's say Cristiano Ronaldo is about to take a penalty kick. You know exactly how much time it will take, right? From the moment he kicks to the moment ball hits the net. That's the precise measurement. But in computer world, we don't have that luxury of exact time. So we use time complexity to give us a ballpark or rather the approximate figure of how much time an algorithm will take to complete its task. Think of it like guessing how long it would take Ronaldo to score 10, 100 or rather even 1000 goals. As the number of goals increases, the time taken also increases, right? But the exact time depends on a lot of factors, just like in programming. So another simple example is, imagine you're looking for a friend in a huge crowd. If you're just randomly searching, it might take a while, right? Now imagine you have a list of everyone in the crowd arranged alphabetically and your friend's name is Ronaldo. Now, if you search through the list, you can find them much faster. That's like having a more efficient algorithm with a better time complexity. Alright, now let's break down some of the common time complexities you will encounter in programming using real life examples. So first one is constant time. This is the simplest one. So this is just like flipping a light switch. No matter how big your house is, flipping that switch always takes the same amount of time. Similarly, in programming, if an operation takes the same amount of time regardless of the input size, we say it has of one time complexity. For example, accessing an element in an array by its index is usually of one. It doesn't matter how big the array is, you can grab that element instantly. And another example is, let's say you're finding the sum of n natural numbers. You'd apply the formula directly n into n plus one by two. No matter how big the n is, we'll get it in a constant time. So hope you got the idea. Next up is O of n time complexity. This is a linear time. So imagine you are searching for a friend in a large crowd as in here. To find them, you have to check each person one by one until you spot them. That's O of n time complexity. The more the people are, the longer it will take since you have to go through each person. So here, the time taken goes directly in proportion to the number of people. So we can say the solid example is iterating through the list using the for loop or while loop. And the next is quadratic time complexity. Imagine you're at a party and everyone has to talk to everyone else. As the more people join, the number of conversations grows really fast. This is of n squared time complexity where the more people or input you have, the work increases much quicker because everyone is interacting with everyone. So let's say we are using the two natural for loops then it is O of n squared time complexity. And like it's not just about two natural for loops, you can use while loop within for loop, for loop within while loop, just like that. Next up is cubic time. So here, think about building a giant football stadium. If the number of seats, rows and columns all increase, the complexity of the arrangements even grows faster, right? That's cubic time complexity, where adding one more element means a lot more work. For example, if you have three natural for loops, that's a cubic time complexity. Next is square root time. Imagine you're cutting a square football field into smaller squares. So this is a square football field. Uh, imagine like that. It is not square, obviously. So if you want to divide it into four sections, you'll make two cuts, one horizontally, one vertically, right? So for nine sections, you'll make three cuts, one, two, and three. That's square root of n, where the number of cuts grows at a square root rate as you divide more. So the solid example is checking if the number is prime or not. So for that, we have to iterate till square root of n, right? To check if n is a prime or not. So we iterate from two to square root of n. And if the number n is divisible by any number in that range, it is not a prime number. So that's how it is, uh, the square root time complexity. Next is logarithmic time. Now imagine a different scenario. You were trying to guess a number between one to 100. So if you use a binary search strategy, you start in middle and then you go left to right. 
So you can cut the number of possibilities in half with each guess. So this is O of log n time, where the time taken grows slowly even as the number of possibilities increases. So basically here at each step, you reduce the search space by 2. So that's why it's O of log n, right? So n by 2, n by 2, n by 2, and it will become like reduced each time. So that is logarithmic time complexity. So classic example is we discussed, right? It's a binary search. Next is linear atomic time complexity. So let's say you're organizing a football tournament and you need to arrange the teams in the best possible order. So now you're combining two strategies, checking each team and then dividing and conquering to organize them. This is O of n log n time, where a combination of linear and logarithmic time complexity is used. This is commonly used in sorting algorithms like match sort, quick sort. Next is exponential time. Imagine you're deciding whether to invite friends to a party. For each friend, you have to take two choices, invite or don't invite. So if you have five friends, then there are two power five possibilities, right? So that is 32 combinations possible. As you add more friends, the number of combinations doubles each time. That's of two power n com time complexity, where the work grows exponentially as you add more input, making this kind of algorithms very slowly as a problem size increases. Next up is factorial time. Imagine you're trying to arrange a group of people in every possible order. So now if you have five people, there are five factorial or 120 possibilities to arrange them. This is like factorial time complexity, where the number of possibilities grows extremely fast. With just 10 people, the number of possible arrangements skyrocket up to 3.6 million. Algorithms with factorial time complexity become impractical for larger inputs because the work required explodes quickly, right? So this is the big O complexity chart. As we see here, which is excellent, O of 1. And then, which is good, O of log n. Next, fair is O of n. And then, bad is O of n log n. And then, this is horrible time complexity. So, O of n square and O of 2 power n and O of n factorial. Basically, these are like, it will take longer operations, right? So, the number of operations increases, then it's a bad time complexity for a computer. So uh, this is the order O of 1 and then O of log n and O of n and O of n log n and O of n square and O of 2 power n and O of n factorial. Okay, now let's talk about space complexity. It's like time, this is an abstraction to estimate how much memory an algorithm will use. In real life, space complexity is like asking how much space will this thing take up? Now imagine you're planning for a trip. You got a suitcase and you need to figure out how much space you need for clothes. The more clothes you pack, the more space you need in a suitcase, right? That's space complexity in real world. In programming, it's the same idea, but with memory. How much memory does an algorithm need as the size of input increases? More input usually means more memory, just like more clause means a bigger suitcase. So let's break down the common ones. First one is the best case scenario, which is O of 1 or constant space complexity. So imagine you're packing for a quick trip and you need only one small backpack. Whether you're going for a day or two, your packing style doesn't change. This is the example I, I've been saying about. So you're always with the same backpack. That's O of 1 space complexity. It means the amount of memory your algorithm needs stays constant no matter how much data you're working with. You'll only need a fixed amount of space. So we can say a classic example is uh, dealing with the variable of type integer fruit like that. Next is linear space. Now imagine you're planning for a longer trip. So you need more space for every additional day you plan to stay. If you're going for seven days, you might need seven outfits. So the space you need grows linearly with the number of days. So that's O of N space complexity. The more input you have, the more memory your algorithm will need. So let's say we're working with certain hash map, then that's O of N space complexity because we had to process all these elements and then we had to store them, right? So next is quadratic space. Imagine you're planning a huge event and every guest brings a plus one who also needs their own luggage, right? So this is the huge event I'm talking about. And now if you have 100 guests, that could mean up to 10,000 items of luggage. That's O of n square space complexity, where the space grows exponentially as your input size grows. You're not just increasing your luggage proportionally, it just multiplies right here. So a common scenario where this happens is when dealing with matrices or two-dimensional grids, such as in graph representations or dynamic programming tables. Next is logarithmic space. This is just like organizing a series of nested circuits. 
You start with big one and inside that you put a smaller one and inside that you put even smaller one and so on. With each level you are adding the space needed. It's not as simple as of one but this is much more efficient when compared to of n and of n square. So one common case is like using a recursive algorithm with binary trees such as searching or traversing a balanced binary search tree. To sum it up, of one is like packing one backpack for a shorter trip. And of n is like needing more suitcases as your trip gets longer. And of n square is like every guest at event needing their own luggage, exponentially increasing the space needed. And of log n is like set of nested suitcases, efficiently reducing the space taken. So in programming, space complexity helps us figure out how much memory an algorithm will need as an input grows. Just like with the time complexity, it's all about making sure the solution is efficient and doesn't waste resources. So in summary, time complexity tells us how long an algorithm will take, just like estimating how long it will take to analyze score goals. Space complexity tells us how much memory an algorithm will need, just like figuring out how much space your clothes will take up in your suitcase. So basically, there are just abstract ways for us to estimate performance in computer world. In real life, we might know the exact time or space needed, but in programming, it helps us to make decisions about which algorithms to use. And that's a wrap. If this video helped you understand time and space complexities, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And as always, I'll see you next one.